Hi, my name is Emery, and this is our host, Jimmy. Welcome to I'll Bet Ya. This week, we will be talking about pollinators. Jimmy, did you know that June 22nd to the 28th has been designated National Pollinators Week? That's awesome. Pollinators are animals such as bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and moths that go from flower to flower collecting nectar, spreading pollen all over that creates fruits and seeds. Let's check in with our friend Courtney at Maymont's Butterfly Garden to see what she can teach us about pollinators. I'll bet you can. Well, thanks, Ermory and Jiminy. I'm here at the Maymont Butterfly Garden where we have all kinds of native plants that are perfect for our native pollinators. Let's take a quick walk around and see who we can find. Wow, the flowers look beautiful today. I see that pretty yellow tickweed and some purple echinacea. Oh wow, and look, a bee on some wild bergamot. The butterflies are everywhere, like this silver spotted skipper. Or this buckeye butterfly. Oh, and look, a bumblebee. Let's look carefully to see if it's carrying any pollen. Yep, see those orange spots on its leg? That's pollen that it's collected as it moves from flower to flower. Here in our garden, we also have these mason bee houses. Mason bees are one of our most important pollinators and they can pollinate about 2,000 flowers every single day. So mason bees utilize holes that have already been drilled in the wood by things like carpenter bees or woodpeckers and then they use mud to pack into those holes to create cells where baby bees can develop. Do you remember that bumblebee we saw a minute ago? It had hairs on its legs called scopa, and that's where they collect pollen. Mason bees actually have their scopa on the underside of their abdomen, and that's how they collect pollen. Native pollinators are really important because oftentimes they can travel a further distance and pollinate a wider range of flowers than our non-native pollinators like honeybees. Mason bee hatch times also line up with flower bloom times, which helps maximize the amount of flowers they can pollinate. While we love our honeybees and everything they can do for us, it's really important to support our native bees, like mason bees. Now there is one special thing that honeybees can do for us. They make honey, which we all love. So one of our amazing volunteers, Rick, sent in some footage of one of his honeybee hives so that we can get a really up close look at it. Honeybees make honey by collecting nectar with their mouths and then spitting it up into the wax cells within their beehives. As Rick pulls out this panel here, you can see the bees inside creating honey and taking care of baby bees. I invited our friend Courtney back to try out an experiment. In this experiment, Courtney's gonna be a honeybee and I'm gonna be a mason bee. Let's see what happens. For this experiment, we chose to use paint to represent different types of pollen. As you can see, the honey bee only pollinates a small patch of flowers, while a mason bee pollinates a large patch of flowers. Pollinating a wider range of flowers is important for something called genetic diversity. This helps species withstand a changing environment in varying conditions. Let's take a look at the results. We can see that a honeybee's patch of flowers only has a small variety of pollen, while the mason bee's patch has a wider variety. While all pollination is important, we want to try our best to support our native bees. If you want to learn how to help native pollinators, you can try things such as making your own mason beehives, like Jimmy and I did. The instructions will be on our website. We would love to see what you guys have made. Just use hashtag Mayla on all social media accounts. Did you learn something new? I'll bet you did.